Greetings Retro and Lemmers and welcome to another old game show commentary. I'm Harold Rutherford Yak and joining me today is my co-presenter. It is Mr. Desert Island Games, Mr. Executioner, JL76 Gaming. Ahoy there! Hi. Ah, ah so what's the show we're watching today, land lovers? Oh, it's Bullseye. You can't beat a bitter Billy. I love this animated intro. Did they remove yeah. this from the latest episodes? They updated it, I think, but it was generally the same, yeah. They had different people on the bus. Different <laughs> darts players on the bus. Oh my goodness, this is painfully 80s, even though it's no, probably yeah. 90s. No, this is, this is, no, you can tell this is 80s. Yes, and all the people in the audience are 80 years old. Jim Bone was about 60 year old there, and he's still alive now, so he must be about 90. Here come the contestants! Oh, look at those 80s t-shirts and haircuts, you can't beat it. Oh, one of those guys is the Wolfman, Martin Adams. <laughs> By the way, this is just a random show that we've picked off YouTube. We've no idea what season or what episode it is. It just says full show too. Yes, uploaded by Central South 5, who Mr. JL76 Gaming claims no longer exists, so we can do commentaries over the top. Yeah. I don't know what year this is from, but it could be as early as 1982, because it's been it's been on the go since at least 1982. In fact, Series 2 was 1982, so this could be a long, long time ago. Ah, oh, okay. A long time before I was even alive, then. Unfortunately, I was. Uh, I was 6 years old in 1982, so... Oh, you weren't that old then. This used to be part of my Sunday afternoon entertainment. Um, we would watch, um, I think it was Bullseye, he was on about maybe 4 o'clock on a Sunday, and then I think yeah, you got like some uh, heart to heart, and then you'd get the news, and then you'd get catchphrase at 7 o'clock. Oh, those were the days. <laughs> I used to watch it as well, but that must have been in the early 90s. I don't know if it was still running then, but I do yeah. remember watching it, because you used to be yeah. able to win, wait for it, a colour television. Turning the television off because he's all like his trick turning the television off. And uh, oh, we just talked about it then. Yeah, <laughs> a hi-fi system. A carpet bag. Uh, plant. Sandwich maker. Toasty maker. Oh, you win. <laughs> That's the best one. <laughs> So what are they talking about here? Let's turn this up. Expensive and you... Sorry, it's a bit prohibitive. Though. They're trying. You're not, so you're not being to stamps, Dennis? No. Well, the show is 25 minutes long. They've got to fill it all out somehow. Yeah. Just this a bit of up, banter. This setup at the start used to change. You used to, I mean, obviously in this one, you've, you get a, they come up to the little bit in the middle and they talk, but as the show progressed, it, they used to have a, a sofa at one point. They sat on the sofa. Uh, or they just had like three stools, so they they kind of changed the format of this as he as it progressed through the years. A sofa, cool. So it would yeah. have been like a chat show with Jim Bowen. Yes. And actually, talking about Jim Bowen and Bullseye, here's something you may probably didn't know. I've actually met Jim Bowen. All right. Was it Super Smashing Great? It was, and me and my family were down at uh, Morecambe for our annual uh, family holiday, and we went to um, oh I can't remember the name of the club. I think it was the Tetley Arms or something like that, but basically Jim Bone was doing Bullseye Live in this club, and uh, my brother and dad went up to play Bullseye. Oh. We all got a photo with Jim Bone afterwards, and we got a, a signed Jim Bone LP. LP? What, he did yes. a record? He did a record, yep. Yeah. What was it? So, I can't, we never played it, it was, I think it was him just being a crooner, you know? Was it something by darts? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and of course, most people uh, in the 80s did have uh, moustaches, as you can see. Yes, that is a lovely moustache. You know, I was yeah. thinking the other day, I was watching a football match, and it's sad. Hello! Hello! It's, it's very, very sad how no goalkeepers have moustaches anymore, except in the month of November, when they grow one for Movember. <laughs> Who's your favourite moustached goalkeeper? Good question. Yeah. <sighs> I used to quite like David Siemens, that was a big thick bushy one and the best thing about it it was just a moustache it wasn't a goatee and moustache combo although they can be quite good I think I prefer the ones where they're just single moustaches yeah Neville Southall used to have a moustache oh yes name any goalkeeper yeah. and they used to have moustaches Nigel Martin used to have a moustache but for me the ultimate one was um, you might not know this one but hopefully you do because he was a goalkeeper for Dundee United 
called Hamish McAlpine. I'm going to look him up. And he had a wonderful moustache. Wonderful. What about Grobbler? Chris Grobbler had a moustache, yep. Yes. He went for a, he eventually grew that into a full goatee, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. And he was also a match fixer. So enough about him. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly, sorry, yes, allegedly. No. And let's see what's going on in the show today. Yes. Barry Wainwright and Nigel Barry Wainwright. Wainwright. More players from Yorkshire. Have you ever played a Bullseye video game or DVD game? I have not, which is sacrilege, isn't it? Yes. There used to be a game I played, and I can't, it was for one of my 8 bit computers, it was probably the Commodore 64 or the Atari 65 XE, but it was called Bully Sport and Dart. Ah, right. I've seen yeah. a Let's Play of that on the yeah. Specky. Collie UK did it. Yeah. I've seen every single one of Collie UK's videos. Yeah. And also, I've played the, the Bullseye DVD game. Really? How do you do that? Do you throw darts at the screen? Yeah, we're using your DVD remote control. Well, that would be super smashing great. <laughs> <laughs> a young baby, that's lovely, that's fine. And so you're a bit disappointed with the lack of moustaches in this team. Yes. Yeah. He looks like he's too young. He looks like he's about twenty. <laughs> Father and son, do you think? Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. Here's here's another thing as well, and this is going into dodgy territory, right? Because uh, this will give you an idea of the kind of things I used to watch when I was younger. But I was watching the Adult Channel one night. Mm -hmm. I'm going somewhere with this. And they had a, a wet, a wet t-shirt competition. And guess who one of the judges was in this wet t-shirt competition? Not Jim Bowen. Jim Bowen. What? <laughs> Whoa! God, yeah. And that would have been super smashing great now. Yeah. First round of losing oh, it's the first round! Yes. Hands on your bonus buttons, lads. Look at those uh, NHS glasses on him. What about a question for Dennis? We'll have a shot of put that. Oh, oh, he reminds me of somebody. Who? It's that bloke with the ghosty then. Right, here we go. Hey, put luck. Good job. Hundred! Oh, he did as well. Oh, it's George Michael. That's who he is. <laughs> George Michael. <laughs> it's a mix between George Michael and Noel Edmonds. All of you do this and the other two hands on your buttons. Look at your monitors and you'll see a photograph. I'm sure you'll know this singer's adopted name. What's his real name? Reginald Dwight. Reginald Dwight. Oh. Tell me yet, Bill. Ted? Bowen Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Reg Dwight. Reg Dwight is exactly right. Give you yes. Well done, sir. Nice spectacle. <laughs> Do we get bonus points for saying Reginald? I hope so. Mm. Uh, Britain, please. Britain, we shall try to get mm, this. Interesting choice. Come on, David. Britain, we want. Bills spelling. <laughs> there was a spelling round. <laughs> oh, he's not got it. Oh, What's he got? His dash, he was putting him off. <laughs> he saw himself. His reflection in the board. By George Bernard Shaw, who taught Eliza Doolittle to speak properly. The same man who told you to speak properly. Did you ever see that uh, Peter K talking about Bullseye? I have indeed, yes. You know, I bet you're throwing the darts and he's like that. Yeah, if C's going for books and it goes in spelling, he goes, oh, it's going to spelling. Well, Peter Key was like, oh, it's going to me arse. <laughs> I've got quite a few VHSs of Peter Key. Don't tell Woodlin. Well, this guy throws strangely. That was weird. He just went, well, uh, It seemed to be effective. Yes. And there's a light on there. Pressure's on you a bit, Nigel. Chenienko. Chenenko is absolutely right. Konstantin Chenenko gets you thirty pounds. Well done. So yes. No, smart ass. Dennis and Ted with hundred pounds. Bill and David with thirty pounds, and Barry and Nigel with eighty pounds. We up the question. It's all to play for, though. It's all to play for. That's a nice tie he has there. It goes well with his shirt. It doesn't go well with the CRT television, though. All right, next contestant. I like it when I get one wrong and Billy comes along and goes, "Moo." <laughs> In one. Oh, he's gone in words. What's the difference between words and spelling? Well, you don't have to spell the word. A young her. I never would have got that. He got it straight away. Well done. I was just going to say, give us a chance, beard, beardy. <laughs> well, he didn't even get the last one. Yeah, what is the capital of France? Berlin. Oh, no, wait a minute. The town of Grasse in the south of France 
is the centre of one of France's most famous industries. Which one? That was spooky, actually, started asking a question about a French city then. You've got a sixth sense, Mr. Yak. Well, they always ask questions about France on these shows, though, don't they? Uh, I can't say I've noticed, but it looks like it. Right, Nigel, choose a subject. Spelling, please, Jim. Spelling, you shall have. Oh, spelling! You must be good at spelling. Oh, I love it when Billy did the spelling. He's like, oh. he's what he walks along with his dictionary, doesn't he? When the SAS stormed the Iranian embassy, they abseiled from the roof. Can you spell abseil? Hmm. A B. I thought it was going to say roof. S E I L. He's right. A difficult. Yeah. No, he's got it wrong. Mo. No, he got it right, didn't he? Oh, right. He got the points. All right. He My got... bad. He got points for that! I'm not sure that's not how you spell Absil. Yeah, oh well, okay. I think it is, actually. Bully oh. will concur with his dictionary. His 1984 dictionary. That doesn't have noob in it. Or frenemy. It's keeping patriotic to the end. <laughs> Spelling. Never mind. Why do not pick in sport? He's in spieling again. Bill. Sport, please. Sport, sir. Sport we'd like. Here we Notice, go. Uh, B Jim Bourne was doing the devil horns there, did you notice that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, sport. I bet it's cricket. In February 1984, a jump jockey became the second man in, his in the history of national hunt racing to ride his 1,000th winner. Who was he? I don't know. Listen, pick it. Listen, pick it. Johnny Frankham gets you 100 pounds. Peter Frampton? Oh, I never would have got that. Because <laughs> it's incorrect. That guy in the middle came from behind us. Well done to him. Nigel. History, please, Jim. History. I knew this would happen. We're just attempting to answer all the questions, aren't we? Yes. Is this guy again? Uh, it's like, um, I'm free, that guy, isn't it? <laughs> oh, dear. I hope he's not watching this. He'll come and hunt us down. Uh, don't worry. The um, executioner will protect me. War. This was the last land battle in Britain. What was the name of the battle, Nigel? Waterloo. I don't know. I wasn't listening. Battle <laughs> de Bruyne. Well, I'm going to steal that sound effect and use it in my videos. <laughs> you should. Culloden gets you another hundred pounds. Well done. Yes, they're on three hundred and ten quid now. Really, I should have known that, shouldn't I? Bill and David with three hundred and ten pounds. Barry and Nigel with two hundred and thirty pounds. So. Barry and Nigel. Barry, 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 Barry. <laughs> Harry and Barry. Oh, here we go. It is Noel Edmonds slash whatever the heck his name was from Wham. Here's your tanker. Oh, they're not even getting tankers. This must be old ones. Oh, if they... Oh, hand embroidered badges. They've been eliminated. Oh, don't, they don't even get a bendy billy. You get the money, though. I'd take the money. Yeah, £230 is a lot of money back in those days. Yeah, back in those days when they literally used to count out the money in front of them and give them the money. Yeah. It would take me two minutes to count this money, £10. <laughs> <laughs> Ten pounds. It's all in two pounds. Uh, yeah. One's your two, your three's your four. <laughs> oh, a real dartboard. Hey, it's about time. None of that fake stuff. Do you think they had to replace the other board? Like when you see the real dartboards in yeah. pubs and all the stuff inside is coming out, all the cork, it's all bursting out. Ah, Tony Green, I was wondering where he was. He'll appear later, won't he? He's here now. Oh, there he is, looking yeah. quite young, though. Wearing his uh, bowling uniform. I do believe that in 2013, Bullseye made a bit of a comeback. And it may actually still be going right now. And Tony Green is... Yes, he's still on it. I think it was Dave Spikey who presented Spikey, it. Yeah, no, I, don't, I think it was a one series, a one off series. But yeah, I didn't watch it. Yes. They brought back Blockbusters as well, didn't they? Oh, you can't put Blockbusters down. That's one of the best TV shows ever. Yes. And it made a good video game as well. On the Amstrad CPC. Maybe. <laughs> I had an actual board game of Blockbusters. Oh, that would have been interesting. Can I have a pee, please, Bob? Yes, the toilet's through there. <laughs> Interestingly, in the latest Golden Skull episode, they had Blockbusters in, in that, didn't you see it? I haven't seen that yeah. yet, no, I'll we'll yeah, have to watch we'll that. I'm a bit behind on my videos, unfortunately. Barry, 43 to me. See, look how yeah. he's standing. Yeah, I think he's cheating. I'm free! 
20. That is a strange throw that he's got. It's like he's throwing knives or something. It seems to be quite effective, though. Well, yeah, so you got this far. Mm. We got to the show. Which official in the House of Lords carries a staff of office, which is an ebony stick surmounted with a gold lion? The Speaker. The Lord Chancellor. Man it's with the stick. The cost of bill. Black Rod. Black Rod gives you £43. Black Rod, yes indeed, which is near Bolton. Is it? Yes. Oh. There's a good Aldi there. Tony Green, you need a haircut. Just saying. Well, this guy's got the best haircut and moustache combo, I've oh, got to say. Okay, yeah. But he's probably the worst at darts. He's supposed to be the darts player as well, out the team. Do we get a professional coming on this show later? Yes, they do yes. the, the throw for charity. Yep. Oh, I hope it's Eric Bristow. I hope it's um, Paul Taylor. I hope it's that fat bloke. Oh, that's all of them, isn't it? Oh, Sorry. do you know what I hope it's... I hope it's, I hope it's Jockey Wilson. It could be. May he rest in peace. Jackie Wilson. <laughs> do you remember her on Top of the Pops? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <down. laughs> <laughs> Say no more. <clears throat> Link it in the description. You should. I shall, because this is going on retroonthem.com, isn't it? Indeed. So I'll sort that out for you. Eels? Well, uh, can you give me a little bit more than just eels, Nigel? Baby eels. Baby eels gets you £41. We're a little bit generous there because we're losing you anyway. So there we are. <laughs> These are very odd numbers that they've got there. 353 three and 332. Does that reflect how many that they've got on the dartboard? Yeah, it's whatever they've thrown on the dartboard, basically. Sorry, it's been a while since I've seen this. It's quite close in the end, wasn't it? But um, the, the, the strange stand starts player has lost. The knife thrower. Yeah. It's not prepared him well for the world of Bullseye. No. Oh, they've got the tankards. But still no bendy billies. More fantastic animation. End of part one. Well, remember this is, remember this was the, the 80s, so, you know. Oh, it's on Challenge TV, though. Oh, yeah. And the magic of... YouTube will pause the adverts. Who needs adverts on YouTube? Oh, yeah, who's this? This is, this? This is the, the real darts player. Steve, somebody? Steve Barrowman. I don't know. Never heard of him. John Barrowman's older brother. <laughs> Steve Bailey. Scott Bailey's older brother. <laughs> so let's uh, give the best of order Steve Brennan. Stay quiet, quiet. Shh, shh. He's playing. Piers, Piers Taylor? Okay, Stevie. You ready, Steve? Hey, Steve. Come on. Good luck, Steve. Have you? So we're in a wig. <laughs> I'm gonna get a haircut like that. Yeah. Well, I, want a, I want a mullet. No. Oh, treble one. Oh dear. Treble twenty. Oh, I'm gonna treble twenty. Well done. I think you're slightly ahead of me. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I won't spoil it for you. I'll wait a few seconds. <laughs> twenty. Another 20. Two 20s. Oh, yeah. That's 283. Well done, Steve. Oh, That's alright. That's alright. Well, but he, need, he needs 301, I think it is, to get it doubled, so... Oh, well. Or 300. I've more. always quite liked the Bullseye logo with Bully, though. They've kept that all the way through, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. 1982 to 2014. Even though they've changed the introductions. It's the interview time with the Dutch player. Listen, how come you play for Ireland and you're living in Suffolk? Uh, well, we're supposed to be thick ass paddies, aren't we? <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's uh, racist? No, my father was born in Ireland in a little market. Well, that was acceptable in the 80s. Mm. Well, he's only talking about yourself, I suppose. The Only Fools and Horses DVD had a lot of references to things like Provo's edited out. Oh, I've not noticed that. I've not noticed that. I've got the, I've got a uh, Only Fools and Horses box set, and uh, I know a lot of the music's edited out of it um, because it's copyright. But I've not noticed they've the, because uh, they used to say all oh, go down to the P A K I S shop, didn't they? Things like that. Oh so, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if they've edited that out or not. Oh, that must have been early eighties. So <coughs> common vernacular. Yeah. But these days, in this post Burnham Manning era. Unfortunately, you can't say stuff like that. Or should I say, fortunately? I don't know. I'm talking myself into a corner here, John. Please help me. Excuse me, I was He's falling asleep. Help! 
At least the moustache man's get through to the next round, so that's good. <laughs> right, so we're going to see the prizes, I think, in a minute. Oh, yes. We need that's... to do it. See what we need to do it. Go on, go on. In one. That stuff. Come on, follow me down. I like that noise it made. It's always did it exciting, was it? Sounds like a constipated yak. In one! Dishwasher! Oh yes. With dirty dishes. In two! Coffee percolator! Woohoo! In three! Camera with film! Wow. Wow. In four! A plush rhino! Jesus. Yeah. In five! Oh, cool! A foldable bike! <gasps> oh! oh! In six! Hey! Oh, I'm sure TPC! I just wow. exploded. In seven! Sorry. Birmingham International Airport, the whole place. In eight! <laughs> Toast, Toast me! me. <laughs> <laughs> I got a special prize! Yes. A grandfather <laughs> clock! <laughs> What? I can't believe there's an Amstrad. I want the Yucca plant. Yes, this is 1984, isn't it? Amstrad CPC, no. a brand new computer. I wonder what games they got with that, if any. Oh, yeah, the eight pack. Oh. Come on, you've got to win this Amstrad. If I was throwing a dart seat, I'd be going for the Toasty Maker and the, the, the Amstrad. Because you don't have one, do you? Right, come yeah, on, lad. Neither. I'll get neither. Oh, he's missed. Come on. Black again. Oh. But that's red, it's number one. That's the dishwasher. That was one no, don't want the dishwasher. Amstrad CPC. This guy probably didn't even know what an Amstrad was. And here comes a known Dutch player. Oh, he's going for seven. He's going for the CPC. But that's red, it's number seven. That's another one you want. Oh, no, that was the Birmingham International Airport, wasn't it? Yeah. You wouldn't hold airport. Number five. Going well. That's the folding bike. And the bike. I would have had the bike. That's pretty cool. I'd oh, like awesome. one of those. Yeah, he wants number six. We want to get number six here. Come on, six. It's black. He's going for the bullseye. Black again. Oh, come Ooh. on, man. Oh, he's a darts player. He's crap. Right. It's three. three. Fine, you've got the camera. The camera. Mm. Can you plug it into your computer? Can you plug it into the Amstrad? I've got a question. Whatever happened to the Amstrad? Did it just go unclaimed? unclaimed? I want it. Somebody stole it. Jim mm. Bowen took it home and messed around with it. And sold it to Novabug. He played Amstrad. He played Roland in the Caves. <laughs> Jim Bowen in the Caves. Let's get him on the next show as a celebrity Let's Play. Prizes against the night's start night. <laughs> hiding behind the door. Your winnings, three and a half hundred, three fifty-three safe. Charity, two hundred and eighty-three safe. You're just playing with the prizes you've won. I remember in the later shows, they used to gamble the money and the prizes. Always oh, rubbing his arm, he's not sure what to do. I Come on. Ah, that is cold. You are moustache man. You have the power. <laughs> He's saying, right, I'm a crap starts player. Let's just go. You're going to have a gamble. Non yes, the gamble. Here we go. You've got to do it for the sake of the show. I think that was a bad choice, by the way, because that guy's a crap darts player. But the Amstrad CPC. Hello. Come on. Right. What surprise? Going to be a speedboat. That's a twenty. That's hey, not bad. Oh, that's not bad. That's not too bad. That, that's an on-darts player. 56. Come on. I bet an on-darts player does better than a darts player. Travel 20 to get you on your way. That's a four. Oh, you dragged that one horribly. Come on, still. That's a 20. 20. Well, that's a 20. It's unlucky, but that's the Never gamble. Mind. Come on, round it up. Let's have a look at it. And there you are. Oh. Told you what to go for it. Let's look at what you could have won. Oh well, no! It's a mini metro. Well, unfortunately, the car can't drive itself, so we had to wheel it out on a giant dartboard. Is that actually a mini metro, yeah? Or is it a Fiat? Bit of a rust bucket these days. Yeah. That's not bad. Pretty good for 1984. I think my father used to have one. Oh, is that a Vauxhall Nova? A Vauxhall Nova bug. <laughs> hey. Oh, you can't beat a bit of bully! You can't be a bit of Billy. Bye bye. Bye. And that was a central production for RetroOneLim.com. Thank you very much for watching this very special TV show commentary. Joining me tonight was JL76 Gaming. What did you think of that, John? 
I had a lot of fun doing that.